Welcome back to Badminton Unlimited. You're watching a special look back at the Yonex All England Open Badminton Championships 2021. As we head into the business end of the competition, many intriguing matches were lined up in the semi-finals. Two high-level women's singles matches were played out on Saturday. Kornpawi Chochuwong met her first seeded opponent in Pusala v Sindhu and passed with flying colours, taking out the error-strewn Indian in stray games. My plan just I have to control myself first and fly every single shot because it, she's also strong and fast. I only fight. <laughs> in a clash of former world champions, Nozomi Okuhara snatched victory from Rachinok Intanon by winning seven of the last eight points in the decider to complete an amazing comeback from 14-18 down. Oh, incredible gap from Nozomi Okuhara there. Shot the game, six. 6 to 11 uh, behind five points so I think more more speed up maybe she got pressure for me so many mistakes actually I, I try to believe myself that like if point by point I also can winning today but yeah when she come up she like she believe herself more there were no surprises in the first women's double semi-final. Yuki Fukushima and Sayaka Hirota endured an opening game assault by the unseeded Selena Piek and Cheryl Seinen before cruising through the second game. Second seeds Mayu Matsumoto and Wakana Nagahara wasted no time in joining their compatriots in the final, following a solid performance against the fifth seeds and teammates Nami Matsuyama and Chiharu Shida. Japan's domination spilled over to the men's doubles. Takeshi Kamura and Keigo Sonoda launched a comeback from 11-16 down in the opening game and managed to keep Kim Astrup and Anders Scout Rasmussen at bay for the remaining of the match. Oh, that's a great shot. Yeah. What a super shot from Keigo Sonoda. Hiroyuki Endo and Yuta Watanabe took another step towards their title defense as they brought an end to the fairy tale run of Yeta Bay and Lassa Molheda of Denmark in 36 minutes. Yuta Watanabe would return to the courts again with Arisa Higashino. The second seeds hit the right note from the get go and were able to avenge their defeat to Marcus Ellis and Lauren Smith here 12 months ago. And the famous drop shot setting up the opportunity. I think it was a pretty poor performance overall, to be honest. Um, I think especially at that first set, it took us a long time to get up to speed. We were very passive. In the other semi-final, Yuki Kaneko and Misaki Matsutomo crushed third seeds Chan Peng Sun and Go Liu Ying with an incredible fight back from a 12-point deficit in the second game. Oh, brilliant! That's and they've out. done it! Well, that is absolutely extraordinary. So, this is a good thing. I think it's 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 a good thing. Yeah, the pressure is definitely on us uh, because uh, we already lost the first game, so uh, we wanted the second set so bad, but unfortunately we didn't perform that. Yeah. Over in men's singles, Lee Zijia backed up his win over Kento Momota by dismantling first-time semi-finalist Mark Kariao with great maturity and confidence. The Malaysian was clearly delighted to make it through to his first major final. In a rematch of the HSBC BWF World Tour Finals this January, Victor Axelsson reversed the result from Thailand and entered his seventh straight final. His younger compatriot Anders Anderson built a comfortable 11-6 lead in the decider, but the drift that had played a big part in the match thwarted his game plan and forced him into making errors. I think playing against the drift helped me. I had a good lifts and uh, played a good defense, so that was 
a really important part. I don't know. I mean, Victor has a, a really good defense. So if you want to, I mean, score some points by attacking, you, you almost need to hit the line. So I guess that's why.